Welcome to Beyond the Edge. I'm Will Wheaton. Today we'll be looking at a new concept called personal video production. From computer-generated music videos to the latest high-tech electronics from Japan, this powerful new idea is changing the world of video. First, we'll go behind the scenes at Universal Studios in Hollywood, where a new affordable personal video tool is being used to create state-of-the-art special effects for Steven Spielberg's NBC series, Sequest. It takes place in the year 2018. Sequest was designed by uh, Nathan Bridger, a oceanographer, explorer, adventurer. Primarily it was designed as the ultimate weapon. A war almost breaks out and the, the world decides that it's time for a, like a confederation. The Sequest now, as it will be shown on the show, is a, uh, is a half military, half science vehicle. The toaster has made this possible. Toaster has made Sequest become a new kind of television uh, where it's somewhere in between television and a feature. And it's filling a niche that, that a very sophisticated audience is craving. She's locked and headed in. Countermeasures. Countermeasures aren't responding, sir. Sound collision. All hands, brace for collision. All hands, brace for collision. Everybody hold tight. Torpedo 100 meters and closing. 50 meters. The most interesting aspect of the show is what will, what will the world be doing with the ocean in 25 years? This is where the world's going to have to go to support itself. And considering that it's not been explored, it's a vast new uh, frontier. In traditional effects, they're very labor intensive. They require huge amounts of manpower and, and crew. There was no way we could have done this show without, without Toaster and without Lightning. Um, this is absolutely revolutionary television. It's kind of scary, and every, every week, you know, we're, it's a challenge on Sequest, but it's about a challenge. It's about going out farther, and, and this, is, this is the ultimate machine to meet, to meet that challenge. It really is. Jenny, start closing the main airlock now. You're not through yet. Just close it. Start closing it right now. Big thing, by the way. Across town from Universal's underwater adventure, visual effects wizard Ron Thornton has created a mysterious, space-bound Casablanca for the Warner Brothers TV movie Babylon 5. This five-mile-long space station was created in Ron's bedroom using a video toaster. Starting with just one workstation on his desk, Ron now leads a team of visual effects artists at his own company, Foundation Imaging. Ron's breakthrough work recently won him an Emmy Award for Babylon 5's stunning visual effects. This January, Babylon 5 will be a weekly series. Very quiet, please. And roll sound. Hey. Here we go. Settle. And action. One last thing, Commander. Why is it called Babylon 5? Babylons 1, 2, and 3 were sabotaged and destroyed. Number 4 vanished without a trace. To this day, no one knows what happened to it. Swell. I started in visual effects in England, uh, working with the BBC on uh, shows like Doctor Who and Blake Seven and Tripods. There are two really interesting challenges for me in Babylon 5, one of which is design, um, is to be able to come up with something that's not the same old boring grey spaceships, is to put a bit of colour in it, a little bit of style, you know, sometimes be a little bit frivolous with it. And it's a great challenge. To, there's been a, an interesting evolution in visual effects. There were spaceships on wires, there was high-speed photography. 
with the video toaster, you are everything. You are the cameraman, you are the model maker, you know, you, you're doing your compositing on the fly. There was one particular shot in Babylon 5 that we did that could not have been done with miniatures at all. It, it would have just been exorbitantly expensive. We'd have had to have like an 80 foot model, 200 feet of track. It's a push of a button in Lightwave. As far as I'm concerned, the visual effects for Babylon 5 would not have been able to have been done to anything like the level of quality without the toaster. I mean, we'd have had maybe five or six shots in the pilot as opposed to 50. use the video toaster for a myriad of different things on Babylon 5. We do everything from uh, screen displays with it, we do um, the high-end visual effects, the exteriors of Babylon 5, the deep space shots, we're doing uh, composite shots where we're flying little camera recorders around inside the station, we're doing matte shots where we're creating gardens and things like that inside the station. And even some of the smaller bits and pieces, like we're making transparencies that they use on set as uh, stand-in screen displays. What's happening now, after we've done the pilot and now we're into the series, is that uh, the toaster is moving ahead faster than the producers can keep up with it. And we're having to remind them and say, you can do this. Please do it. You don't have to like save us or anything. Musician Todd Rundgren has always been attracted to the cutting edge. In the late 1970s, Todd was one of the few pioneers experimenting with the then radical idea of music videos. In 1990, Todd began production on the first music video to be produced entirely with 3D computer graphics. He began work in his home using the just introduced video toaster. A short six weeks later, Todd's video Change Myself premiered on MTV. Following the success of Change Myself, Todd launched a new creative venture called Newtopia. Newtopia is a unique digital video facility, which brings a fine arts perspective to the previously sterile world of 3D computer graphics. Their first creation, Theology, succeeded in defining a totally unique 3D look. Their latest creation is from Todd's album, No World Order. It's the music video property.
The Akihabara District in central Tokyo covers only a few square blocks, yet it has the highest concentration of cool electronic gizmos on the planet. Tourists and technophiles alike find Akihabara fascinating not only for the selection, but because new products are usually released there six to nine months before they reach our shores. From computers and a watch to car-based satellite maps, tomorrow's technology makes its debut in Akihabara. If you're a video nerd, then your first stop in Akihabara should be the TVs. In Akihabara today, the word is wide, widescreen television. These panoramic screens can show letterboxed videos and laser discs without the annoying black bands at the top and bottom of the picture. The first widescreen sets are just arriving in the US, but sadly, the price tags are also extra wide. Next year's trend will be towards lower prices and other ways to use that extra screen area, like two full TV images side by side or multiple picture in pictures. Next on the must-see list is the latest in camcorders. Here the direction is toward higher resolutions and color viewfinders. Inexpensive new LCD technology has recently made color viewfinders less expensive than the current black and white tube viewfinders. Look for color viewfinders to start popping up everywhere. With basic VCRs now in almost every home, VCRs are evolving towards greater integration. Integrated remote controls, integrated easy programming ones, and even integrating other formats, as is the case with this new unit that combines a VHS VCR with an 8mm VCR. Now if you shoot on 8mm, you can make those dubs for your VHS-bound relative in one easy step. When visiting Akihabara, it's tempting to buy something cool and be the first on your block with the latest technology. Be warned though, you'll be without a warranty, and with both the instructions and the controls labeled in Japanese, learning to use your new Techno Marble could be frustrating. But if you're like me, obstacles and challenges just lend personality to your electronics. There are now 20 million of us with camcorders, and our impact is being felt. From Tiananmen Square to Rodney King, camcorders aren't just recording history, they're making it. Until recently, one of the problems with consumer camcorders has been that they don't have the same high-quality look of the expensive three-chip studio cameras that TV stations use. Well, that's all changing with the arrival of the first consumer-level three-chip camcorders from Japan. Video Toaster User Magazine's editor, Phil Kurz, has taken them for a spin to see if they're ready for prime time. The introduction of three-chip consumer camcorders is opening new horizons for videographers. Broadcast cameras at a TV station like this one use three chips called CCDs to turn pictures into video. This has always given broadcast cameras an advantage in picture resolution and color fidelity, but at a much higher cost. 
Today we'll take a look at the first two consumer three-chip camcorders available in the U.S. The first on the market was the Sony CCD VX3. This Hi8 camcorder has a retail price of $3,800, although its street price can be just under $3,000. It weighs in at 4.5 pounds, fully loaded, and is 14 inches long. The Panasonic AG3P records in SVHS format using compact C tape. It has a retail price of $3,300 with a street price of about $2,400. It weighs 2.5 and pounds and measures 10 inches long. The first stop in any video equipment test is the lab. Here we analyze both our cameras using resolution charts and video test equipment like waveform monitors and vector scopes. Although both manufacturers rate their camera resolution at over 400 lines, in our tests they each showed about 350 lines. While this clearly beats today's one-chip camcorders, a three-chip camera's biggest advantage is its color depth, range, and accuracy. The most meaningful test is how the variables in each camera interact in different real-world situations. If there's a camcorder paradise, this is it. A nice bright day at a sunny park. These conditions will show our cameras at their very best. In addition to our three-chip cameras, we've added a single-chip TR81 Handycam to see just how much improvement $2,000 will buy you. The cameras have been mounted together to frame the same shot for direct comparison. Now all we need is something interesting to shoot. Unfortunately, life's not all a walk in the park, so we took our camcorders shopping at the mall. Here, indirect lights and mall security pose unique challenges for our camcorders. If shooting in a bright sunny park is camcorder paradise, then shooting by the light of a single candle in a dark basement room must be camcorder hell. Both of our three chip cameras are equipped with a gain up function that allows them to shoot under low light conditions. While using gain up does help under low light, it introduces noise into the video picture. Let's take a look at how they perform in real world low light situations by taking them out to the street.
So after working with these cameras for several days, what are our conclusions? The Sony VX3's pluses include a remote control and a manual focus ring that allows snap zooms. For those of you used to shooting with a beefy professional camera, you'll be more at home with the feel of the VX3. However, we feel a camcorder of this size should have interchangeable lenses. The VX3's size can be a downside as well. Not only is it impossible to hide in your pocket, it's on the heavy side for a camcorder. Also, the Sony camera cost about $600 more than the Panasonic AG3. The AG3 offers several advantages. Its weight makes it a better choice if you like to travel light. And its compact size and digital image stabilizer afford terrific point and shoot simplicity. The AG3's 20 times digital zoom could come in handy in some situations, although there's a price to pay in reduced image resolution. The camera's color LCD viewfinder is a mixed blessing. Although it's a pleasure to shoot with at the park, the LCD display made it very difficult to focus manually in the mall. We were also disappointed in Panasonic's promises of a time-based corrector in the AG3. Our tests found little evidence of correction in the video signal. As you've seen from the side-by-side -side tests, the two three-chip cameras display different color sensitivity. The AG3's color fidelity seemed more true to life, while the VX3's resolution appeared slightly higher. Certainly, the most startling finding was that the inexpensive TR81 single-chip camera fared surprisingly well. In fact, in some shots, the one-chip camera's performance was not visibly different from that of its more expensive cousins. However, the advanced features of these three-chip cameras represent a major step forward in the technology available to consumers. Are they ready for prime time? During the production of this program, a coincidence provided the answer. A midnight fire broke out at a nearby lumberyard. Our crew grabbed a three-chip camcorder and was first on the scene to capture some dramatic footage. A local network affiliate put our consumer camcorder footage on the air to complete their coverage of the blaze. In our case, what started out as a test ended up as the real thing. That's all for our look at the people and technologies of personal video production. Now stay tuned for a special demonstration of the new Video Toaster 4000. I think you'll like it. I'll see you next time, Beyond the Edge. In an average week, the networks bring you six made-for-TV movies. Dull. 18 hours of sitcoms. Ditto. 35 hours of infomercials. Insane. 44 hours of soap operas. Very dull. 62 hours of reruns. I saw that. And 3.2 days of commercials. <laughs> now, it's payback time. Oh, what do you mean? You see, there are only three of them. You mean the networks? Yeah, the old style networks, and they're fading away. But there are 30 million of us. Yeah, everyone with a camcorder and a VCR. And now we've got a powerful new weapon against blah, blah, blah vision. What's the new weapon? It's new software. Yeah. It's new hardware. Hey. It's the next generation of the most successful video tool of all time. A whole new video toaster. It'll be the end of blah, blah, blah television. <laughs> the Video Toaster 4000.
As you can see, the video effects in the Toaster 4000 blow away all the old dinosaur equipment and left them all behind. But there's more to making television than cutting edge effects. Uh, like what? You need broadcast quality graphics. And Toaster 4000 delivers. What do you start? Start with Toaster Paint to blend images together and create cool backgrounds. Neat. With Toaster Paint, retouching reality is a snap. I like easy. Then add titles to your creation in the new Toaster 4000 Character Generator. The CG. Toaster CG has been rewritten from the ground up. Now, titling is as easy as choosing a font, typing in some text, and then putting it right where you need it. But don't stop there. Go ahead and play. Play with the shadows, borders, colors, or sizes anywhere anytime. Then jazz things up with 16 million color brushes from Lightwave or Toaster Paint. Toaster CG even has the power to make your titles and graphics as transparently clear as you'd like. Nice. In fact, Toaster CG has more than a hundred new features. Like what? Take a look. There's a new light wave that'll launch your videos into another dimension. Light years ahead. With more than 250 new features, it's now the most powerful 3D animation system in the world. You can create anything you can imagine with advanced tools, like spline patches, beveling, and 3D text from PostScript. The new light wave is full of stunning breakthroughs that'll give your animations amazing realism and lifelike enthusiasm. But this light wave is much more than radical new features. Now it's up to 10 times faster, and it's been completely redesigned to make 3D easier for everyone. So get ready to watch your animations spring to life and your flying logos soar like a good logo should. Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah. Hot new software and all new hardware. Better hardware? You bet. The redesigned Toaster 4000 has new custom chips that take advantage of a powerful new partner, the state-of-the-art Amiga 4000. Together, they add up to some awesome video power, from mind-blowing new kinds of effects to user-adjustable video timing and an even better Genlock encoder. All that, plus a stunning new breakthrough. You're now watching Toaster 4000 play back this 3D animation in real time without an expensive single-frame VCR. Well, that's incredible. So you can see why we say the Video Toaster 4000 is pushing the revolution to the next level. And I'm ready. Faster, better, and easier. Now the only limit is your imagination. Time to begin. So unleash your potential. Infiltrate the networks. Make money. Make a statement. And whatever kind of television you make, make it yours with the Video Toaster 4000.